the frost has formed, the snow has fallen, December is here. You know what that means. Ghost stories. So this book isn't actually a ghost story, but it is a creepy horror gothic story, which is close enough. The Creeper Man by Dawn Kurtigich is about Scylla and Nori Daniels, sisters who seek refuge with their crazy aunt Kath at Le Baum or Blood Manor after fleeing their abusive father. At first, everything is lovely, like a dream. But then Aunt Kath tells him about the protector of the forest surrounding Le Baum, a demonic entity known as the Creeper Man, who may have let them pass to get in, but now will not let them leave. At first, they think this is just a spooky story, but when crazy Aunt Kath finally decides to live up to her nickname, Scylla finds the story may be true. Something is watching them from the trees, keeping them trapped in the manor, killing their supply of homegrown food. They remain holed up for years, their only link to the outside world to the visits from local boy Goan, who used to live in the house. Until one day, Scylla makes a horrifying discovery. The trees are moving closer. The Creeper Man is coming. So yeah, it's your typical modern gothic horror story. It's probably marketed more as horror with the demonic elements and the weird sort of YA front cover, which I don't really like. But I would put it more in the gothic camp. Instead of focusing explicitly on the demonic presence and the fear factor, it actually focuses more on the themes of isolation and insanity, which are both key to the gothic genre. We know from quite early on that Scylla thinks she has gone insane, which calls into question everything she witnesses. We don't know for certain that the Cooper Man is real, as all of her experiences could just be her imagination. There's also Crazy Aunt Kath, who has clearly done her background reading, because as soon as she snaps, she takes herself to the attic, Le Baume Manor is very isolated, the nearest town being uh, three miles away on the other side of the demon-infested forest, and so the overall atmosphere is not one of fear necessarily, but more unease, uncertainty and desperation. It also has that man versus nature and the danger of the sublime that is so prevalent in Gothic literature. As you can probably guess, it is very atmospheric and creepy. Le Baume Manor is an excellent setting, nestled deep in the heart of the woods, cut off from the world. There is some excellent imagery, even if it is quite grotesque, things like teeth rotting and falling out, maggots, dried wasp husks, mould growing on the clothes and skin, the smell of decay and rot permeating the house. It's unpleasant, but it is very effective. I enjoyed the characters. Scylla is a great protagonist and you get a real sense of her desperation throughout. She's trying her best to keep her sister fed and safe, despite being trapped in a losing battle. And though she has moments of weakness where she snaps, she never really gives up, which is admirable. Nori is lovely as well as the younger sister. She's mute, so she speaks solely through sign language and has a sort of deformed arm, but she is cheerful and bubbly and hopeful and optimistic. Um, there are also short interludes from her throughout, almost like diary entries, which at first are just a bit tragic, but do take a sinister turn. Gowen is a much needed dose of reality coming from the outside world with bags of apples to keep the sisters alive. And Kath pacing in the attic gives a lovely backdrop of sinister creaking and screaming. And something about just knowing that she's always there in the house is quite creepy. There is an unconventional writing style employed here. It's one of those things where some people see that it's breaking convention and will immediately assume it's gonna be deep and meaningful and others who will judge it to be pretentious twaddle based purely on form. I tried to go in without preconceptions and on this occasion, I think the breaking of conventions works. Different fonts and writing styles throughout add to that sense of insanity and losing touch with reality and seem to reflect Scylla's almost being trapped within her own mind. And the way that some of the scenes are told out of order, repeated with different details as well are very effective. I always liked how the different fonts were used for different characters, that was a nice little touch. I enjoyed the flashbacks to the past where Kath, Pammy, who is Scylla and Nori's mother, and Anne are children, their sisters. And when they first create or summon the Creeper Man. I wish there were a few more scenes and maybe a few more answers set in that time period, but maybe they didn't make complete sense with the ending. Nevertheless, I still enjoyed them as scenes. The ending itself was a little bit left field and I can see why some people might not like it, but I think it was done quite well and there were sufficient clues throughout that makes it easy to accept. There were some good twists as well, which make you want to go back and reevaluate the rest of the book, which I think is always a good thing. <laughs> 
it's a little drawn out. The status quo of Scylla being insane and trapped and hungry in the house is gotten to very quickly. In an early chapter, she turns 15, the aunt goes crazy, two or three years pass, she's crazy and that happens in about five lines. <laughs> And it lasts quite a long time to the point that it's a bit of a chore to read because it's the same spiel. It's all very effective, but too much without very much actually happening. And by the end, I think I understand why the author chose to write it this way. Does it make up for it? I'm not sure. I'd have liked to have seen how it worked if the status quo section was shortened, but I think it would have been easy to achieve without ruining the effect by showing more of the decline over the years between Scylla being 15 and 18, the food running out, the garden dying, etc. I also think the writing could have been richer, um, as in Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marina Garcia, which also had the problem of not a huge amount happening, but made up for this with gorgeous prose. A lot of the effect in Cooper Man was communicated through Scylla's thoughts, repeated sentences, short paragraphs and the such, but there was a lack of richness through most of the prose, which may have helped make the dirge of Scylla's insanity a little more enjoyable. Perhaps starting with rich language and pairing it back as Scylla descends might have been effective. Without giving away any spoilers, because honestly this is not a book you want to read with spoilers, there were some sections throughout which were thrown into confusion by the ending. Not in a not everything is tied up neatly on purpose way, but in a these no longer make sense way and actually serve to undercut the truth of the book. I'm not sure about the setting, it feels like it's set sort of in the 50s with the lack of technology, the manor house in the middle of nowhere, the neighbour who will willingly walk three miles every day to see them, the homegrown food, the lack of even generic pop culture. The two girls arrive at the manor house on foot without mentioning anything else. They wear mostly dresses, there are mentions of modern things like a hairdryer and a phone, but they're pretty inconsequential. And there's this underlying threat of war throughout. Obviously, there was no war in 2016, which is when this is meant to be set, and it was so recent that it's a little difficult to make yourself believe it without any real build-up, and there's no build-up. But in the 50s, we had the Cold War scare, which lasted a very long time, and it would be easy to believe a threat of World War Three on the horizon the characters were living in the 50s. And these sections in the past, set in the 80s, feel more like the 20s or 30s with the young girls learning things like how to sew and making their own dolls out of sackcloth, playing on their own in the woods, 12 year olds being put in charge of her siblings. I know none of it is definitive, but it adds to the overall feeling this book should have been set about 60 years previous. Overall, this is a well put together and enjoyably creepy read. If you like gothic books, books that are a little different and you don't mind breaking convention, I'd give this a go. If you enjoy creepy books, but also appreciate a neat ending so you can still sleep at night afterwards, I'd recommend it. If you're more of a horror purist, you might be a bit disappointed by the ending. Mm -hmm.